Kenyon Drake, a miracle! They won. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Oh my. How do you lose like that? Oh my. God. How do you lose like oh. that? I don't know how to explain what happened on Sunday, so I thought that old fellow right there, that grandpa, would be the perfect way to introduce us to this week of the In The Hump podcast. My name is Jake Mendel, and on the other line, I have my buddy Topher. And Topher, as someone from Massachusetts, someone who lives and breathes Miami Dolphins football and is stuck in Patriotsville, we'll use it, there is nothing better than what we saw on Sunday. And being someone who lives in South Florida, uh, it's been the talk of the town probably, you know, since the game. Like, it's been – it's it's almost re- – it rejuvenated, like, the like the perception and kind of gave, like, fans and the media, like, a short-term happiness yep. when it comes to this team. Like, the tone of the team has changed now where it goes to, like, hope. And uh, in the hunt, no pun intended. No, so there now, is like, pun like, intended. What oh, yeah. But like it's it, it just changed the way we discuss the team, and and it's been it's it's great. Like it feels it feels good. Like it's a good feeling. Now you need to kind of walk me through your Sunday afternoon because you weren't watching mm-hmm. the game, right? Uh, no, I was in Orlando, and so I was at my uh, cousin's wedding, or it was it was the day of the wedding, and so I was really following the game through Twitter. Like I was following it through the Dolphins posting their highlights on the Twitter feed and whatever Twitter was twatting about. Um, and so then I just kept following it. And as I walk into the ceremony, like I sh- I get to the wedding and I turn my phone off right when I turn my phone off, I have the sports line app pop up Kenyon Drake touchdown 34, 33. And I just instantly shut my phone off and I was like, wait a minute, what was that? <laughs> so then they all do the whole, like, you know, you know, you may kiss the broad, yada, 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 and all that. And I instantly got to turn my phone back on. Because I'm like, what in the bleep happened? And I texted you, and you were like, oh, they got lucky on some crazy play. And I was like, I still haven't seen the play. Like, I still haven't seen this play. So then I start, like, Twitter searching, like, like Dolphins play or whatever, you know. And I finally get to it, and then it's all over the place. Mm-hmm. And I kept watching it over and over again without even watching the game. Like, I don't know what happened in the game, you know, prior to that. And then I finally got home yesterday. And I sat down, I watched the condensed version of the game, and the whole build-up to it was amazing. Was amazing, the build-up to it. I think the build-up is what makes it, because I was sitting there, you know, I I was actually pacing around my living room, just thinking to myself, they fooled us again, because the opportunities were there. You have uh, Brandon Bolden scoring two touchdowns, you have... um, uh, Janikowski missing two, uh, an extra point. Goskowski, Goskowski, all the Owskis just f them all. Um, but the Dolphins did everything right, and the way that game should have ended, it was just horrible. Because I was sitting there, I was frustrated with Minka Fitzpatrick giving up a couple first downs, even though he held Josh Gordon just three for five uh, for thirty-five yards. But it just seemed like nothing. They couldn't get that one little spark because, like I meant, everything went right. You know, Tom Brady getting sacked right before halftime, and the, the Pats couldn't kick a field goal, which still blows my mind. It was just such an incredible game because I was, I was, it was fun. fun. You know, usually it's the other way around. That that's kind of the in the hunt joke is they're gonna get you latched in and you're gonna be hyped, 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 and then just all collapse. Now, don't get me wrong, that might still happen, but. For oh, once, we're for fully, things to we're fully latched in, fully latched in. We're fully hooked now. The hook is in our mouths, and soon, 
either we're going to be keep fighting or we're going to be yanked. It's going to fall out of our mouth and we're going to be swimming around not getting anything. Exactly. But Topher, the, I think the, the most inter- like I guess the greatest part of this for me is there's been a Patriots dynasty for years. I you know what's in the middle of it? You know what's in the middle of that whole thing? Wildcat. Everything, every like, there's always a dolphin part in that Patriots dynasty, yeah. Uh, and it's 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 crazy. It's like a home loss, and it's I'm gonna probably remember. I'm gonna remember this next year that next time the Dolphins come to Miami, I feel confident saying, "Yeah, they're gonna win now." Next like, time the Patriots come to Miami. Next time the Patriots come to Miami next season, that like 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 when are we just gonna start predicting it? Because because Tom Brady plays awful in Miami, like. In terms of like win loss record, like wins and losses, the team's not like he does not do good in Miami. To put it into perspective, Tom Brady, when leading at the half at Miami, is four and five for so long every year. Uh, I I had to deal with it. It was oh great. I, twice a year I had to deal with you know all my friends giving me shit because they're Patriots fans. Now you know Wildcat was great. It's a little long ago for what we're trying to say here, but but yeah. Michael Thomas, the Jay Cutler game. Sunday, the Dolphins can put up a fight against the Patriots, and no other team can say that right now. Not a single other team in the NFL. Maybe the Giants, if you want to go that far. But there's a, finally a point where we can stick our foot in the sand and be like, we deserve some respect. And as a Dolphins fan, like sitting there thinking about that is kind of insane. Kind of insane to think that Tom Brady somehow struggles against a team that's made the playoffs once in 2007. And we're not like the we're not the laughing stock, and I, I feel like that's like the best part mm-hmm. is we're not laughed at now. Like people are laughing at what happened to the Patriots, and that rarely happens. That rarely happens for after a result. The Patriots are kind of like mocked, where you're like, "What was Belichick thinking?" Like these dumb pundit questions. What was Belichick thinking? Did you think he knew this would happen? And it's like the whole questioning of Bill Belichick because of this play. I mean, Belichick's done this before, and I think that's why he he takes these risks, and I get it. Like, And I understand what he was trying to do with Gronk being on the field there, but Tannehill's not going to throw that ball 70 yards. There's no he chance. He can't. I don't think he could. That's another thing. I think I, what Tannehill, to leave the game, to get the – I think he was hit on, like, seven straight plays. For him to go through that and come back and, you know, throw three touchdown passes, we got to give him a little credit on that one, don't we? Yeah, I, I, that's probably the most impressive part is over the last two games, it's like the six touchdown passes, that that's the only good spot about him is that he has these six touchdown passes. Like, last game, the off, like, you know, we really didn't touch on it too much because we didn't have a show. But Tannehill looked, like, normal. Like, he looked okay. Look, you know, high completion percentage, but no passing yards. And then come to this game, and he's looked pretty like, – I think he's looked like Ryan Tannehill since he's come back. Like, now that, like, he's in the groove now, I think the rust is shaking off, and he looks like on how he normally looks as a quarterback. Um, Tannehill has won 13 of his last 17, and he's won 11 of his last 12 on home. Of course, of course, of course, of course, a horse. Quarterback stats do not include wins. Uh, the one loss, which is kind of uh, upsetting, it's that Bengals game. Yes, that's the most frustrating one. Is is... Even like looking at looking at how the Bengals are right now. Exactly. So when you kind of think of it that way, that that game kind of makes me have to take a step back when we talk about Tannehill because that that he didn't really have an excuse in that game. Um, people want to say he was injured in the Raiders game, but he but he was at, he threw the ball. If you're playing, there shouldn't be any excuses. You know what I mean? Especially if yeah. you're a quarterback. So when someone says you know he looks like Tannehill, he's still gonna have those games and yeah, and oh, it's, it comes with it. It comes with it. But he looks it. He looks bad. He doesn't look like he's been injured. And, I mean. Yeah, which is huge. And he was awesome. He was a lot of fun to watch. Um, something I think is really interesting is Kenny Stills had eight receptions for 135 yards. He's back, right? He's back. I feel like he's cut. He's back. Everybody else only had one reception on the game. Bolden <laughs> one. Amendola one. Parker one. Butler one. Gore one. Kenny and Drake one. Those laterals don't count. I think Parker, some that counted as a fantasy touchdown for Kenny and Drake. I don't know if you believe that or not, but that that happened. One hundred percent believe it. That, did he get the Did he get the yards too? Like the receiving yards? Yes, 
he did. Oh my god, I, I would murder someone. If that was oh my god. Um, a stat I thought was uh, I thought was going to be a little um, taken advantage of by the Patriots was the Dolphins allow six point five yards after the catch per play on average, almost seven yards. That is second worst in the league. How do the Dolphins go about stopping that? Because there were times uh, the Patterson touchdown, uh, no one, no help deep. The Gronk touchdown, uh, Bobby McCain should have intercepted, but it seems like he does that a couple times a year where um, he's kind of in the vicinity, has the opportunity, and doesn't take advantage of it. Um, and then I think Edelman just roasted, like, Corey McTire, another one of the young guys. Um, how can the Dolphins go about stopping uh, guys after they catch the ball? I think just attacking right away. Like to, to me, that I interpret that as there's a lot of holes in the zone that they're, that defenses are finding, and so they have time to catch it and, and make a, and, you know and run for six run for at least six yards, uh, and and that, you know and then the team finally get like gets to them. Like that, I think that's just tackling and, and, and probably scheme. I, I agree, and Matt Burke didn't do himself any favors yesterday. He um, hasn't. He hasn't at all. And I'm wondering when he's going to start doing something like uh, his job's on the line. When are you going to start being aggressive? When are you going to start attacking? I guess that's kind of a question I have. But the another part that really stood out to the game, do you think Belichick was sitting there after hearing, you know, everyone raves about Darren Rizzi? Do you think he kind of made a point to make Darren Rizzi look, look kind of goofy after the Pats blocked two kicks? Yeah, you know how hard it is to get two blocked kicks in a game, man? Charles Harris blocked like, one and he didn't even block it. It's insane on how to block him and how like and the fact that they got two of them and the fact that they almost that the Dolphins still won that game to me is 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 huge because if you were to think two block hits like that's incredibly hard to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so Belichick probably used something like that. Like he probably whenever whenever I see the Patriots do something, I always think back. All right, they noticed something leading up to this game where they decided to exploit it. So there was something they probably saw, and they decided to exploit it. I don't know what happened yesterday. Um, I think, excuse me, on Sunday. I'm not really sure. I still can't kind of get over it. Um, how many times do you think you've watched that play since it happened? Probably about 10 times. That's 10 to 12 it? times. Yeah, I've heard the clip. Now I've heard the clip also. So for cutting clips, it's like, like just radio clips, about 20 times. Did you um did you hear uh, Bob Greasy and um uh what was it Jimmy Cephalo? Yes, they sounded like they had they had zero desire on talking about it. Like the, like they sounded like they were getting ready. To, they were like they had their keys in their hand and they were getting ready to go. The the greatest part of that was how uh, right before the play, I, I someone in that press the the that booth. Oh, was, Gorkowski's on the field. Gorkowski's on the field. He's not going to tackle anybody. That was incredible. <laughs> that was freaking incredible. They made that play made K- Rob Gronkowski look like Cam Wake running some running after someone like just like if you didn't think that like he looks that unathletic um, in space is like, he part robot I mean that arm brace is something else he looks like a bear like a giant like polar bear where they're like standing straight up and they just kind of have like their arms hanging down to their knees and it's really like like that's what he looks like just an unathletic polar bear. And the fact that he was back there, I don't, I don't know why, like, like why. Well, well, I mean, he was expecting them just to go for the hail mary. Um, I thought it's pretty cool that uh, the Dolphins were able to pull that off after uh, what happened with the Steelers a couple years ago. Um, yes. What was also good to see is Frank Gore's yards per attempt. He finished with twelve carries for ninety-two yards, and I this love that, looked man. like the first game where Gore had like. The issue with Gore is he's going to get you his four yards per carry, but it's literally just going to be four yards every single time, and you're not going to get those big, big type of plays. But he had a couple good, you know, 15-yard runs, but a lot of the time it still ended with him just kind of slamming the ball against the ground because he wasn't able to, uh, you know, get get that big, big run. Um, the biggest he's been thing doing that a lot lately, though. I would say the past two games, he's been a factor, like like where he's getting yards now. It's just not like four yards and fall down. It's yards and chunks. It's yards and I agree. And ch- and checkdowns and checkdowns. He was responsible for some great from Tannehill checkdowns that just kept drives going. Exactly. Um, when we look at 
next on the list is Brandon Bolden. You know, two carries, 60 yards. Both of his touchdowns, Kenyon Drake was on the field. I think for the first time we really saw um, Gaze playing to his players and trying to find weaknesses on another team instead of just trying to run his offense. Because I'd be just like the 11 players on the Patriots defense thinking there's no way Bolden is touching this ball. And I, I think it's... It just shows you how fr- – like, to me, I interpret that as it's frustrated that Kenyon Drake hasn't been getting the ball more if teams are so focused on him. Uh, and we're, we're, like, sitting here giving it to Brandon Bolden because we're acknowledging that Kenyon Drake is probably our best offensive weapon, right? I was going to ask you that, yeah. Uh, nine touchdowns, five receiving, four, four running. I think he's got to be. Like, he's got to be our best weapon. And so, like, the fact that he's using – he's been using as a decoy as well is frustrating because – We've been talking about it, you know, weeks ago on how he hasn't been getting the ball more mm-hmm. and, and, and that he's just been used as a decoy when, like, tell me if you agree with this. Do, do you think Kenyon Drake is a poor man's Christian McCaffrey? Uh, boy, that's a good question. I don't even, I don't know if you can even say poor man's. Say, say McCaffrey's a 10. I'll say Drake's like an 8, maybe a 7. Okay. Something so like he's that. A not, but they're... To me, they're comparable in terms of like what their what their skill set is. Yeah. Uh, you know, and the difference might just be like playing with Cam Newton and having an O line. Well, I mean, they're kind of falling apart too. Do you think either of them could carry an offense, Kenyon Drake or Christian McCaffrey? Yes, because I've seen I've seen McCaffrey do it, and that could just be because of the volume he gets, where he'll just break open a run. Uh, but that just because that could be just because of the oppor- he's getting the opportunity to do that when. Ken and Drake, we've been kind of pounding the table, hoping for those opportunities. And we're getting them, but, like, we're not getting – I don't think we're getting them, like, on how we imagined. I, I 100% agree. Um, when I heard that um, Ezekiel Elliott had 40 touches um, the other day against the Eagles, it kind of made mm-hmm. me question, do you think that Kenyon Drake would be able to handle 40 touches? And if so, what would an outcome of a game be if he got that much uh, volume? I'd say if he he could probably do it once or twice a season, but outside of that, like like maybe even once. And I think they would win, but that would let me know that it's been like a crazy high scoring game for him to be getting those touches, or it's just been a, a game where the offense has been in a crazy rhythm for him to get those touches. Yeah, I just I just feel like he's just so 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 entertaining to watch. Uh, where where it, it's nice to finally see it though, where it's not just the Frank Gore, you know, four 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 because you need those big plays. Frank Gore wasn't gonna outrun Gronk on that play. Um, the best part about that play might have been Kenyon Drake gunning that ball into the um, the stand. He's got there. a cannon. He's got we a cannon. talk about this for a second because this is kind of bothering me. What do you think should the fan have to give that ball back? I don't think the fan should, but I think it would be pretty cool if he did. Uh, strictly because I, I don't think you want to be known as the fan who didn't want to give the ball up. Like, it's just – you don't want to be known as that. Like, it's a pretty douche move. I, I, I think so, at least. What about you? I'm kind of on the other side because every fan um, who's coming out is saying, you know, I'd give it back, I'd give it back. You get a signed jersey, how are you going to think tickets and a signed jersey aren't more uh... – valuable than a ball Val- there is nothing as valuable as the smile i had on my face sunday when kenny and drake made it into that end zone if i had that ball i don't care call me the worst fan in the world this game is about the fans i would take that uh-huh. ball i would you know encase it hang it up treat it like a baby and you know if people want to come see it sure i'd let them but to to make this guy feel like he has to give it up I just don't think that's fair. Oh, I don't think he has to. I just think it's a good gesture if he does. Uh, but I also value the ball differently than, like, you do. I'd be like, here, sure, take it. Because I'm not in the collectibles. But I could see that you're a sports nerd and that you're completely okay with that. I I don't need you. So you're saying if you caught that ball, you, you wouldn't think you'd want to keep it? Uh, probably not. I'm not. I'm not into that stuff. I'm not. I'm not into memorabilia. I'm trying to sell my Dolphins memorabilia. Actually, if you if anybody's interested, I got my Marinos. I'm trying to sell. Nice plug. But I, it's not. It's not memorabilia as much as it is. 
just like one of the greatest moments you're gonna witness and be you are oh it's a great moment great moment great moment that i still can't get over like the different vantage points of like the camera phones at the game like there's all these different crowd shots from corners of the end zone from back of the end zone from uh television sports bars like i can't get over how many angles there are of it and it looks amazing every time have you seen those ticket Ticketmaster commercials, uh, something like that. Yes, yes, we finally got that. We're getting one. We got after that because I think before they used a, a catch uh, DeAndre Hopkins had against the Steelers. I think now or the you... or the the Vikings game, a couple uh, that happened last season in the NFC Championship, right? Or the yep. AF, like the NFC semifinals or, or whatever division finals. Yep, that was the other one, the the Saints Vikings game. There's got to be a Dolphins one now. Uh, oh, there's the... plenty of them. There's so much. They're all over the place. Now we sit. The Titans, the Colts, the Dolphins, and the Ravens, all at seven and six. And the best theory I heard to how this is going to play out is the Ravens are going to win their division up in up in the North. Uh, the Dolphins mm-hmm. are going to make the playoffs and have to face the Ravens in the first round just so we can. That's a nightmare. That's a night. That's a that's a nightmare. <laughs> that I would honestly I would watch it. I would watch it. I'd be like I know that I'm not I'm done. I'm not I'm not wasting my Saturday. I'd watch the first seven minutes because right after that's all you'd need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, video. actually, no, I can tell by the kickoff. I will. T- I can tell by the kickoff, like on how on how they return it. Uh, yeah. You know, is it like a funky like? Is it a funky return where like it's like he kind of catches it but thinks about going, uh, thinks about kneeling it and then takes off with it and, and gets stopped at the fifteen yard line. That's all I need to know. Did you know there was a there was a play uh, let, uh, I, I would, the Patriots? I would cry, Jake. I would cry, Jake, if they play the Ravens in the playoffs. Oh my god! Legit, that, legit cry. I would lose my so mind. Uh, did you see there was actually a play the Patriots took it out of the end zone from eight yards deep, and still made it out to the I didn't, twenty? I did not. But that, uh, you're already you're already killing me with like this post traumatic stress with the with just the thought. Of, I don't even want to make the playoffs anymore. I don't even I don't care. I got you shook. Oh, I'm, I'm shook, and it's not even like it's the Ravens on the road in the playoffs. <laughs> I I love how it, it, it just to kind of go back how we started the show. It sucks you in because now the only the worst part about the Dolphins in this game is I'm sitting here thinking about the Bengals game. They could have beaten the Colts. They could have beaten the Lions. They're the coulda woulda shouldas. It sucks. It sucks how we're like they could. This team could have easily be at nine or ten wins already, but no, you know they're they're. They're middle of the pack, and I think that's what makes the NFL so great. How every week people get sick of having like the Tannehill talk, the Adam Gase talk. Is he gonna stay? Is he gonna go? It just shows. It's not like fans, you know, going from zero to a hundred or being over dramatic. That's how important each game is when there's a sixteen game season. Where one loss can make you look so bad, where one 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 win can make you look so great, and that's what's so exciting about football because. A couple weeks ago, you could argue Tannehill's done. Tannehill's done. Well, we didn't expect Kenny and Drake to run 69 yards into the end zone to beat the Patriots. We did not expect this stuff to happen. And it just changes the entire landscape so quickly. And that's what makes the NFL king. Yeah, I think we get caught up into the each into each individual game or, or each week. And we lose sight of, like, that it's a 17-week season. And... Uh, we get so sucked into each like game. It's like it's like they're like mini episodes, and we dissect each little mini television episode, forgetting that there's 16 of them. Yeah. And we're like, and that's what it is. And so, I mean, that's why like when I saw that when I was watching the Vikings game yesterday, I was like, yeah, they might they might be able to like do this where they just kind of eke out a win on the road. That well, that's a good place to kind of end it. The Dolphins are six and one at home. Six and mm-hmm. one. That means they are one and five on the road. At least six and one at home sounds pretty elite, doesn't it? Six and one at home sounds like a home field advantage that teams should want to come down here and play. That like if they were good, if they were like eleven and five and they won the division, they can get at least home field advantage and you could almost guarantee them advancing. Oh yeah. Um it, and then just to go back to it again, the one kind of sucks because you were up 10 in, or excuse me, against Cincinnati. Topher, we made a little bit of an announcement yesterday or earlier this week. Uh, Recently, and we haven't really, we haven't been able to like, like go crazy over it. It's weird. It's been a weird couple, weird, been a weird week, man. We're, yeah, very weird week. Do you kind of want to explain what, what's happening? 
All right, so ever since we started in the hunt, I started in what, July, Jake? We started this in, in, in late July, kind of like the like right before training camp, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, right around there. So we we started that, and then like last week I get an email from um, Overtime Media, which is like another sports platform, and they want to host our podcast on their platform as like their Dolphins flagship podcast for their NFL channel, which is to me pretty badass that one – uh, people listen, and I always kind of lose thought of that, that people do listen and people enjoy our work. And second, someone wants to actually us to be the representative voice for the Miami Dolphins. That's all. It's, it's scary and awesome at the same time because what we did when we made the show in the hunt, it, it was for the fans. We were dicking around. We were just dicking around. We didn't care. We just wanted to talk sports and be and do our thing. And that's still I, that's still our thing. Exactly. Nothing's going to change. Um, episodes might get a little longer, which might not necessarily be a bad thing. But um, we we did this in the hunt. It's 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 such a joke, but it's so freaking true. And it's and so now they're in the hunt. Every fi- and they're now they're in the hunt. It it goes without saying. It's incredible. This will be our last show on this feed without being labeled uh, employees of overtime media. Um, nothing's going to change though. We're going to keep giving you guys great dolphin content. Um, Look out! We have our Vikings preview. Maybe some out. ads. Maybe maybe some ads. Maybe some, some ads. Maybe we ads can hook you guys up, up with some nice deals. Um, but yeah, this is the in the hunt. Thank you guys so much. This has been a hell of a ride, and we're gonna keep it going. We're gonna keep going. We apologize. Last week we didn't really have a Patriots preview, but who could have guessed that would have happened? Yeah. No, no preview in the world would have said that would have happened. Throw them all out the window. They are bullshit. You can mm. find us. Am I? M-I-A, in the hunt, on Twitter. Cochran, 108, me, J Mendel 94 Topher, me, the Patriots. I still can't get over it. I still can't get over it. Fins up. <laughs>